Protection and Targeting Refugee protection is defined as all activities aimed at obtaining full respect for the rights of the individual in accordance with the letter and the spirit of the relevant bodies of law. For humanitarian actors, this encompasses three key areas. Ensuring refugees enjoy a full array of rights and freedoms. To advocate and intercede on risks, such as the danger of forcible return or arbitrary detention, and the provision of quality protection services such as legal aid, registration, or humanitarian assistance. And that these should be delivered with a protection perspective. Targeting of assistance is the process by which populations in need are identified to enable the provision of timely and relevant assistance ensuring that people receive the most appropriate support to address their needs and reinforce their capacities in support of their protection, while ensuring the effective use of resources. The UNHCR WFP Joint Targeting Guidance is underpinned by joint principles committing the two agencies to collaborate on targeting to those most in need. The principles guide the actions of UNHCR and WFP in selecting and identifying persons of concern in need of assistance, food and other basic needs. The two agencies have committed to the following principles. Targeting must promote and reinforce the protection of persons of concern and contribute to livelihood and solutions outcomes as feasible, in line with a rights-based approach. Accordingly, targeting should be informed by an analysis protection risks and benefits, and continuous monitoring of protection results, as well as measures to identify and mitigate possible negative consequences. UNHCR and WFP will coordinate and work collaboratively with governments and partners to jointly decide on the most appropriate approach, eligibility criteria, and implementation methods for targeting assistance in each context. Agencies will share knowledge and information to support these processes within the framework of the Global Data Sharing Addendum. Participation of persons of concern will be ensured at all stages of targeting in an inclusive, timely, systematic and transparent manner. Targeting must not be discriminatory and should take into account specific needs and risks related to age, gender, disability and diversity. Targeting processes, criteria and outcomes need to reflect this inclusive approach at all stages and respond adequately to the specific needs and risks identified. People that are food insecure, economically vulnerable or with specific protection risks should be identified and targeted for assistance to meet their food and other basic needs based on objective information and practical eligibility criteria. In-depth, contextual, risk, food security and vulnerability analysis are the bedrock for defining needs and subsequent relevant assistance for persons of concern and should inform targeting decisions. The agreed targeting approach should be designed and actioned jointly for the specific context in question. The objective of the targeting process is to include all eligible persons of concern while excluding those not eligible and provide appropriate levels of assistance to households and individuals based on their identified needs. Eligibility criteria must be reviewed and periodically adapted according to the context and in light of feedback and monitoring. The targeting of assistance for basic or essential needs should be coordinated to ensure that needs are met in a coherent and balanced manner. Failure to meet other needs of populations of concern could result in assistance not being used as intended, potentially compromising food security and refugee protection. The agencies should aim to transfer the adequate quantity 
or value of assistance to meet the needs of persons of concern. The total financial costs to carry out a targeting exercise should be weighed against the cost to provide assistance to all and overall protection outcomes of targeting. Accountability to persons of concern must be ensured through communication, participation, transparent processes, feedback and complaints mechanisms that help to identify unmet needs, detect errors and correct targeting as necessary. Information on targeting, including eligibility criteria, must be discussed with persons of concern. The targeting process, eligibility criteria, protection risks, risk mitigation mechanisms and food security outcomes should be monitored across the population of persons of concern and the approach adapted as necessary. Protection is mainstreamed throughout the targeting process in two key ways. The first is by ensuring protection analysis informs the targeting process. Ensuring vulnerability analysis takes into consideration protection needs and reliance on high-risk coping strategies that expose refugees to protection risks. It is crucial to analyse the protection risks alongside a population's vulnerability to food insecurity and economic poverty to inform the targeting process and eligibility criteria. Protection risks relate to the political environment, socio-cultural norms and economic insecurity and there is often a high degree of interplay and reinforcement between socio-economic and protection related vulnerability. Discrimination and harassment can mean that vulnerable groups are deterred from accessing civil documentation, services, employment and assistance. It is important to analyse the impact of this limitation on their access to basic rights, including documentation, land and employment, education, financial, health and other services. A detailed risk assessment of a targeting strategy identifies potential protection risks and mitigation measures. Protection risk can contribute to socio-economic vulnerability and the prevalence of security threats can negatively affect refugees' present and future economic and social engagement. Protection criteria for selecting beneficiaries can be used to complement demographic criteria based on socioeconomic vulnerability. This is supported by expert knowledge of field-based protection realities and is carefully monitored over time to ensure continued relevance while minimizing errors. And finally, monitoring households in different vulnerability categories to assess whether it has increased exposure to protection risks. The second way the protection is mainstreamed throughout the targeting process is through accountability to refugees. Refugees are not beneficiaries of aid, but rights holders with legal entitlements. A rights-based approach is founded on the principle of participation and refers to the full and equal involvement of all members of the community in decision-making processes and activities that affect their lives. Participation also requires that instead of informing and deciding for people, we listen to them and we integrate what we hear into decision making. Our role is to facilitate discussions and analysis with persons of concern so that they can identify their own priorities and preferred outcomes. A protection-based communication strategy is an essential component of the targeting process. That includes information sharing with refugees, such as on eligibility requirements and how to appeal, and also with host communities, government and partners at key stages throughout the targeting process, while ensuring accessibility to communication for refugees, regardless of age, gender or other diverse characteristics. Community consultations that validate the targeting eligibility criteria and approach ensure that protection concerns and risks identified are also captured. Appeals mechanisms are designed to allow beneficiaries to appeal decisions on their eligibility for assistance. 
Protection issues related to the targeting implementation are identified through complaints and feedback mechanisms, ensuring procedures are in place to adequately handle high priority cases such as corruption and complaints relating to sexual exploitation and abuse.